Good afternoon, I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video where we are examining this concept very quickly regarding Ka and Kb acid and base dissociation constant. The Ka and Kb is most relevant for titration questions and it also serves as a source or a point of confusion for many students. But you want to focus primarily on Ka and Kb concept for weak acids and weak bases. Why would that be the case? Because when you're looking at a strong acid and a strong base, they will dissociate completely 100%. Your reaction will be in a single direction. When you're looking at weak acids and weak bases, your reaction has both forward and reverse components. It never dissociates 100%. There's always a certain percentage of dissociation or a proportion of that compound which is dissociating. Hence, the Ka and Kb concept become relevant there. We're looking here first with a weak base and ethyl amine is a good example of a weak base as would be ammonia but I'm looking at ethyl amine. When you put this in the presence of water you'll have a forward and a reverse reaction. You'll have ethyl ammonium and hydroxide. CH3, CH2, NH3 plus. Here we've developed ethyl ammonium ion and hydroxide. This right here is a liquid. This right here is aqueous. That here is aqueous and here it's aqueous. When you're looking at that, only the aqueous species come into your reaction. Since you're looking here at a weak base, you're looking here at a Kb, a base dissociation, and it would be equal to these two items, CH3, CH2, NH3 plus your conjugate acid, your conjugate base, because here you have a base giving rise to a conjugate acid and a conjugate base divided by that base. This right here is exactly where your base dissociation comes into play as you're seeing it right here we're looking at a weak base hence we're looking at this if you're looking at a strong base you don't have to do it because a strong base dissociates 100 percent into its relevant species here we're looking at this and we're looking at kb now when you're looking at this specific item here ethylamine it has both a kb and a ka a base dissociation and an acid dissociation when you're looking here at the forward reaction, you're looking at the Kb. When you're looking at the reverse reaction, then you'll bring in the Ka. The Ka in that particular instance would be this right here. The products would not become the reactants and the reactants would become products. But the Ka over here would then become, you would have your this CH3, CH2, NH2 now divided by the new reactants. So you have to think about everything how it comes into play with regards to Ka and Kb. Ka and Kb are coming from the same parental equation but based on the direction of that reaction you're looking at one or the other not both at the same time. The base dissociation constant is looking at the dissociation of the base into conjugate acid conjugate base. The acid dissociation constant is looking at the generation of the base from the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. Here the conjugate acid is now dissociating and giving rise to a base. Here you have a base giving rise to a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. So keep that in mind. When I'm looking at this reaction in this direction, I'm looking at a Kb. When I'm looking at this direction, I'm looking here at a Ka. And a similar analysis will come into play for the weak acid and we will do that next. A good weak acid can be acetic acid, but here I'm looking at formic acid. That's what I have. When you put formic acid in the presence of water, you're looking at a weak acid in the presence of water. It's again not going to 100% dissociate because it's a weak acid. You will generate a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. Here's my aqueous right here. Here's my liquid. Then you'll have a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. What will your conjugate acid conjugate base be? Conjugate acid will be the hydronium ion or you can abbreviate as a hydrogen ion and your conjugate base be formate anion HCOO minus which is your conjugate base conjugate acid conjugate base now when you look at this reaction you're looking at a weak acid you're looking at its dissociation you're bringing in the Ka the Ka here is exactly what you would expect the conjugate acid times the conjugate base the formate anion divided by the concentration of your weak acid the formic acid because you know water, pure liquids and solids are kept out of these equilibrium expressions. Now when you're looking at the Kb for this reaction, you know what you're doing. You're looking at this and you're going in the reverse direction. That is now the products are serving as a reactants and the original reactants are now becoming the products. Here you're going to be looking at a reaction which will be the formic acid will be on the top because now it's the product. 
divided by your new reactants and their concentrations you're seeing them come right over here and you can see that again the K and KB is associated with the same exact item the formic acid but depending on the direction of your reaction one comes into play the other one doesn't it's either or not both simultaneously when you're looking at this in the forward direction you're looking at it acid dissociation because you're dissociating an acid when you're looking at this in the reverse direction you're looking at a base dissociation because you're looking at now the conjugate base now giving rise to an acid. The K A and K B are related to the exact same item but it depends on the direction of the reaction that is at play then either or comes into play. Also keep in mind you don't always have to look at both reactions if you know one you know the other because your proton dissociation constant is always equal to K A times K B and then you know K A is always equal to K W or K B and K B is always equal to your K W or K A. What is a KW in all instances? KW in all instances is related to water 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And why is it related to water? Because of the commonality involved. These reactions are occurring in the presence or in water. So you look at KW which is coming from 1 times 10 to the minus 7 concentration of hydrogen ions and 1 times 10 to the minus 7 concentration of the hydroxide ions coming from water. Hence you have all of this. Now before we end this video, I have erased everything here with regards to the weak acid. Focusing only here on weak base, we're just going to do a calculation. If I'm telling you that the KB of ethylamine is, that is the reaction towards the right, the forward reaction is 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4. It's a small number, close to zero. It tells you you're looking at a weak base. Then for the reverse reaction, if you were doing a titration question and the reverse reaction came into play and you'd have to bring in the Ka, because your reaction shifted into this form, you'll have the ethyl ammonium ion coming into play. And then reacting with the hydroxide to go in the other direction, you know you'd have ethyl amine and then the water coming into play. Now if you have to find the Ka, you can find it from here. You do your Kw divided by your Kb and you do 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4 and that gives you exactly what you would need for the reverse reaction, it would be 1 exponent 14 minus divided by 4.5 exponent 4 minus and you'd have 2.22 repeating times 10 to the minus 11. 2.22 repeating times 10 to the minus 11, that would be your Ka. So you can easily use a Kw to your advantage. Just keep in mind the Ka and the Kb are most relevant for weak acids and weak bases. If you know one, you know the other. Each of these correspondingly applies to one side of the reaction only not both thank you for watching have a good day